Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Anthony Kufasi, functional medicine practitioner, double board certified clinical nutritionist. And in this video today, we're going to be discussing autoimmune disease and genetics and how these two things are highly interconnected. Now, if you're dealing with an autoimmune disease or know someone who is, make sure you share this information with them. Watch this video, like this video. This can be life-changing information for some people as it has for many of our patients, both here in our clinic as well as remotely that I work with all over the world. So first thing we want to talk about though is autoimmune disease. Now remember, once you turn an autoimmune disease on, you can never fully turn it off. You cannot cure it. You can only put it into remission. But there's three things for an autoimmune disease, the three things that need to occur for an autoimmune disease to develop. First, you have to have the genetics in place. The second, you have to have environmental triggers. And third, you have to have a barrier compromise. So these things are all found in the literature. So one of them is genetics though. So let's talk about how the immune system works. The first thing that you have with your immune system is known as T regulatory cells. Now these cells you can think of as the um, commanders or the general in your immune system. They essentially regulate different parts of the immune system, how to kill, when to kill. And so with all autoimmune diseases, these cells are failing. So what these cells control now is two parts of the immune system. One is called Th1 and the other is Th2. Now Th1 cells, these you can think of as the assassins of your immune system. These kill invaders and antigens with harsh chemicals, fast and quick. So they are assassins, they kill them nice and easy, quick. Okay, that's how Th1 works. Now Th2 works a little bit differently, kills invaders a little bit slower, a little bit softer. The problem is with any autoimmune disease, these two things become imbalanced. Either they're tilted higher on Th2, uh, higher on Th1, or they're high, tilted higher on Th2, it's a tear totter one or the other. And so, the bottom line is, is because these cells are failing, they're failing to balance the two parts of the immune system. Now, here's an example of how these things come into play. For example, beta carotene, is found in things such as leafy greens, vet colorful vegetables, so green, uh, I'm orange, red, yellow, like carrots, bell peppers. These all have high levels of beta carotene, which is known as a, it's a carotenoid, but it's a phytonutrient. So it gives you, it gives beneficial um, attributes to foods that are healthy. So while beta carotene can be beneficial, it's an antioxidant, etc., it's often water soluble and it's in, not active, it is, let me fix that really quick here. It is inactive, okay? Now I'm gonna explain this. So it can be inactive, and what beta carotene needs to be converted to is the um, active form of vitamin A, which will be water fat soluble. Remember, fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. So the problem is that you need vitamin A to help regulate these T regulatory cells. Vitamin A is a critical immunomodulator. Such in, in, as well as vitamin D, glutathione, some of these other major players in the immune system. So they help to balance these immune uh, parts out. Now, with some patients, they can have a genetic mutation called BCMO. Now, BCMO converts beta carotene to an active form of vitamin A, a fat soluble form. However, in patients who have this genetic mutation right here, BCMO, Due to their genetics, they might not be able to convert beta carotene into its active form, thereby not having enough active vitamin A to help regulate the immune system, thereby predisposing them and helping them occur, uh, getting them to an autoimmune disease state if the other uh, teeter totter issues are there that are propelling them there. So, again, a leaky gut syndrome, barrier compromise, as well as environmental triggers if we're triggering this immune system. So as you can see, this is, 
This is a really important point here, and this is the type of thing that needs to be tested for because if a patient does have this, there is solutions. You can supplement through this. So by giving active form of vitamin A, you know, there's other active forms that you can find. Cod liver oil, you can find vitamin A and other, other fat-soluble foods as well. But if not, you can also work through this genetic mutation. So there are solutions to this. So your genetics do play a role in your health, but there are options. There's always natural solutions, natural options. And remember, genetics only dictates a certain percentage of your health. Your health is not completely dictated by your genetics. You have to have the environment and you have to have these other um, occurrences happening to trigger these autoimmune genetics to turn on and thereby give you in a disease state. So I hope this video helped you understand just a little bit about how the immune system works as well as an example of why it's so important to be testing for these things. So we check for these for all of our patients if they're dealing with these types of conditions, whether they're here in our clinic as well as remotely all over the world. So again, I'm Dr. Anthony Crefazzi. I hope this video helped you a little bit, gave you a little bit of an idea on this stuff. So if you're dealing with an autoimmune disease or know someone who is, please make sure you share this with them. This really can be life-changing for a lot of people, so it's really important. I want to help as many people as I can, so and this is the type of information can, that can really go a long way. So again, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something new today, and have a great day.